Today we're going to talk about pulsed MIG welding. You've already been in the booth. We've already went over the setup and operation of the S350 for short circuit and spray transfer. To start off, let me just explain what pulse is a little bit. Short circuit welding can be done in all positions. It's a little bit cooler welding process. It's a smaller puddle. It's slower. Once we get up into the spray range, we're, we got a big puddle a big fluid deep penetrating puddle. The problem with traditional spray transfer is you can only run it in flat and horizontal position. We can't run it up, we can't run it overhead or out of position. So what they've come up with on these machines in the last, well for quite a while now, is pulse MIG welding. So what happens is the machine actually pulses the arc. Bum, 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 couple hundred times a second. So it gives us a couple of things. Number one, spatter free welds. No mess on the weld. If you are pulse MIG welding and you have spatter, you have to adjust your machine better. It's not working right. Pulse MIG welding gives us the hot, fluid, deep penetrating puddle, but as the arc is backing off and on a foreground and background, foreground and background, 200, times a second or so, it gives that puddle time to cool so we can run it out of position, vertical and overhead. It's super cool. It's the combination between short circuit and spray transfer. We're doing pulse now. So let's get you in here and I'm just going to show you how to set this stuff up. We're going to go right back to the machine. You come in, it's sitting here just like this. First things first, we got the tab on the plug. We plug the machine in. Tab goes to the back, we put our locking ring on, and if you ever have any questions or this won't go up in there, right, go get your instructor, make sure that's right. So we come down here and turn the machine on. We are going to pull the work clamp off, and we're going to pull the gun off, whichever side we're using. Pretty simple. Next thing is the gas line. Now when we pulse MIG weld, it is a spray transfer type of arc. It is a pulsed spray. In order to get a spray arc, we have to have an argon rich cover gas. So the best one that we use in here, and there's several you can use, but the best one we use in here is we look through and we say 90% argon, 10% CO2. Boom, on, on, on. Now we come over to the machine, just like we've done in the other videos, and we find this control panel. If you remember, you have to check the wire. Is it 045 or is it 035? Because on program 20, we have CO2 045. That's not what we want. 21 is an argon mix, 045. But it says nothing about pulse. We come in here and we have steel, pulse, argon mix, 045, and that's what we have right here. If we go to another one, we change the diameter, we change the gas. If we come back here, We're back down into the other programs we're not looking for. There's steel, pulse, argon mix, but that's 035. If you're running 045 wire with an 035 program, trust me, it's not going to work very well. So we got to find the program that you're set up for. 052, 045, steel, pulsed, argon mix. 045. The only other thing I want to talk to you about, what changes with this machine in pulse is we have our wire feed speed. So our wire feed speed is increasing and decreasing, but over here if you look there is a V, we're not reading voltage anymore, we're reading arc length. And this arc length can only go to 150 
1.5 or down to 0.5. That's it. The best place to start is about 1. That's usually a good place to start. As you increase your wire feed speed or decrease, you also have to adjust your arc length. And how do you know when it's adjusted right? No spatter. Spatter free. That is the whole idea behind pulse MIG welding. It is a spatter free clean weld that needs no post cleaning. The little berries that have to be ground off. That's why we do this. So make your adjustments here on your wire and then adjust your arc length. Now what is arc length you say? Well, I'm going to show you up here the best that I can. Remember that here is our nozzle and here is our wire. Here's our base metal. This is an open arc welding process, so this wire does not come down and touch the base metal before it welds. It starts burning off up here. So what arc length is, is the distance between the wire and the base metal. If we make that arc length too long, it'll cut the edges out and give you undercut, and it won't deposit metal in the middle as well as it needs to. If you make the arc too short, you're forcing the metal down in there and it doesn't have enough space to break up and atomize into hundreds of little teeny droplets like a spray. So when it's too short, the wire stubs into the base metal and that's when you start getting spatter. And that is what we don't want. We want it somewhere right in between. The techniques are very similar. We always push pulse spray. We can run it up, we can run it down, we can run it in all the positions. The biggest thing to learn about this though is your arc length. Wherever your wire feed is set, whether it's 100 inches a minute or 700 inches a minute, then you have to go in and adjust that arc length. If you have any popping, crackling, spitting, spattering, you got to take the time to adjust your machine in better. And that's always arc length. It can go up just a little bit. 0.1 or 0.2 can make that difference. When you're pulse MIG welding, we want to hear a nice, smooth, consistent buzz with no spatter. If you can't figure it out, get your instructors in here to show you. But pulse MIG welding is pretty much what everybody's doing. It's part of your curriculum and you are going to learn how to do it.